Hello Arts 102 and welcome to the uh, Project 2 demo and I'm just going to show you a few things about lighting and adjustment layers and I'll explain what that is in just a minute but I want to take a look at this lighting file this is in the unit 11 value under lecture notes just open that lighting file into Photoshop to give us something to play with. I'm going to download that and I'm going to try to download it. There we go. Okay. So <clears throat> this is just going to give us an image to play with. And basically, um, oh, it opened twice. <laughs> Got impatient there. So this is just a black and white image, obviously, as you can see. Um, it gives us an image to play with so that we can um, really take a look at the values. And what I'm going to do is, um, for project two, uh, I'm going to have one image, ultimately, that I end up with. And I'm going to take that and make a series of five designs with altered lighting on each one. And when I alter the values, it's going to alter the mood of that composition. And I've got a number of different tutorials that you can look at. I'll come back to that in a minute, but um, well, at the end of this tutorial. But um, one of the big things, one of the really big things that uh, you're really going to get a lot of use out of for this is the adjustment layers. And that's right down here. It sort of looks like a half circle or a, a full circle half filled in. It says create new fill or adjustment layer. So I'm going to click on that and I can use these um, as a way of adjusting the image without having to really mess with the actual image, the original pixels. Um, that's what they call non-destructive editing. So this will create a new layer um, but leave the original pixels intact. And that's kind of what you want to strive for if you really want to be a Photoshop ninja so that you can go back to the original and not have to um, not have to be confined by whatever adjustments you make permanently. We don't want to um, do what they call baking the settings in so that they're permanently embedded in the pixels and the image is forever altered. Um, we want to try to make those edits non-destructive. So, <clears throat> um, before I even open that, uh, let's take a look at the histogram window. I'm going to click on Window, and I'm going to come down to Histogram. And I talked, I just mentioned briefly the histogram um, on the keynote. This is what a histogram looks like. And like I said, um, we compared a couple of histograms. One was from uh, 300 and the other was from Clash of the Titans. Basically, you want to try to learn how to read this. And a histogram is its a graph, obviously, as you can see. And what it does is it gives you a look at the distribution of pixel, uh, pixel values in your image. So what we got here is on the left side, we've got black pixels and on the right side we've got white pixels and they go from the spectrum here from black to mid gray to white and everything in between now the height of those spikes represents the number of pixels that appear in the image at that particular color so as you can see we've got a little bit of black a little bit of straight black and that's probably appearing a little bit down here a little bit in the trunk over here some of this probably has some pretty black stuff in it and then as we go up the spectrum kind of jumps up here and typically you want um, as they say anyway you want uh, kind of a bell curve on your photo uh, it doesn't matter if you don't have an exact histogram curve, especially not for this class. It's nothing you need to beat yourself up over, but it is something that you kind of can be aware of and, you know, sort of start thinking about. Um, we can see that actually in the mid grays, there's kind of a dip. Interestingly, that's kind of an anomaly. You don't 
often see that. Um, and then we've got sort of two bumps on maybe, let's say, 60% gray and 40% gray. And then it slopes back down, and as we get into the whites, the pixels become fewer and fewer, and hopefully as we get right to the end, they come down to zero. You want the the black end, the pure black end, and the pure white end, ideally you want those to slope down to zero because if they have a value at the whitest white and the blackest black then what's happening is that um, you've lost some image detail. That's what they call clipping. So you want to avoid that. Um, again for Arts 102 purposes it's nothing you need to beat yourself up over, just be aware of it. But um, if you were to go on to a photography class, they're going to really want you to start looking critically at this. So <clears throat> I'm going to just leave this histogram open while we add some of these adjustment layers. And let's click on that Add Adjustment Layer again. And what I can do is I can start kind of um, playing. There's a lot of adjustment layers that I can play with. Um, I'm going to start with Brightness and Contrast. And this one is actually not what I would call ideal for um, altering lighting. But it does basically what you would expect it to, uh, and it's covering up the histogram. Let me, let me get the histogram where we can see it, because we're going to see this histogram change while I'm altering the lighting. So I just I want to get that where we can see it. And let me get back into my brightness and contrast layer, if I can find that again. Oh, phooey. Where'd it go? There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Just double-click that icon. That's what I thought. Shouldn't have second-guessed myself. Okay, so I've got the brightness kind of turned up a little bit to 18, and um, let me set that back to zero. <clears throat> And like I said, let's watch the histogram while I'm making alterations to this. I can bring the brightness up. And as I bring the brightness up, we can see the pixels kind of are pushing over, sliding over to the right side of things because more and more of the pixels in the image are becoming white. And as I keep going and keep going, they really start to squish over there on the right side and to the point where I've finally blown it out. Um, basically everything practically in the image is white. Not absolutely everything, but this has definitely become a high key image now in comparison again to the original. You can see the difference in the histogram and of course in the image as well. And of course I can bring that brightness down and make it a darker image. And we'll see those we'll see those pixel values slide over to the left until finally they've pushed practically all the way over and it's become very, very dark. So this is one good way to really alter the lighting and I can bring the contrast up or bring it down. This is a good way, it's not what I would call the best way. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna delete that layer. I don't need to see that. I'm just gonna I just want this thing to delete when I ask it to delete. So I'm gonna turn on don't show again. <clears throat> And what I want to do now is um, take a look at the next adjustment layer uh, right after brightness and contrast, which is called levels. And now levels is going to produce an effect very similar to brightness and contrast in many ways. Um, however, it's got a little bit more finite control and it's a little trickier to get used to. So what I'm doing with levels is I am in fact able to remap the black level and the mid gray and the white level to various um, points in the 
composition. So I can remap mid gray to a um, to a sixty percent gray. I think that yeah, that's about sixty percent, sixty one. And what happens is the image kind of becomes darker. That's sort of the perception. If I remap it to about a forty percent gray, the image becomes lighter. What this is doing is if you could think of this as like a rubber band and imagined you drew on that rubber band um, the values that you're remapping. So let's say between this portion of the rubber band and this portion of the rubber band we had black and mid gray. And then between this portion of the rubber band and this portion of the rubber band we had mid gray and white. Well if I stretch this bit I'm extending the area that is darker and compressing the area that is lighter. And if I stretch it this way, the opposite is happening. I'm extending the area that's lighter and compressing the area that's darker. I'm, I'm, I've got now fewer pixels between mid gray and black and a lot more pixels between mid gray and white. So that is a little bit to get your head around. It's something you can definitely experiment with, but um, it's got more power than brightness and contrast. And I can also remap the white value. And basically when I bring it down the image gets brighter. The pure white is, is moved over and everything after this is now 255, 255, 255, or in other words pure digital white. And that is going to cause clipping in this image because there are more pixels sloping off over in these values. And um, if you have an image that slopes off in value and stops, say, right about here, you can open up that, that histogram by remapping your white value to where the final pixels slope off. And you can <clears throat> widen the key range. That's a, a useful piece of information. It's a useful habit to get into with your images. It'll really widen out that key range and, and use a more dynamic range of value. And of course the same is true of the black. I can remap the black as well. So if I were to pull these really close together the effect starts getting pretty wild and stylized as you can see. Much of the image now is just pure black or pure white. I've got just a big line on pure black and a big line on pure white for my histogram. The histogram is basically saying that most of the pixels in the image are either pure black or pure white. And then there's a few values in between. Um, that's not the typical outcome, but in this particular assignment we're experimenting with this stuff and this might this type of image might prove useful for one of the moods that you want to achieve. So, and you can sort of change the area that where those where those values pinch into, and doing so again produces very different kinds of images. <clears throat> so, interesting and very useful. Um, a little weird at first, but it's something to play with. Okay, so I'm going to take that and I'm going to trash that layer again. You'll notice every time I trash these adjustment layers, the um, original image goes back to, you know, pops back up. That's because, again, the edits that I'm doing are non-destructive. The original pixels are not being touched the adjustments are happening in their own layer. So I'm going to add w another layer and this one's going to be curves. <clears throat> now I think the curves are probably the um, the most difficult of all to um, get your head around at first and they're also the most powerful. Um, if I wanted to add some contrast however what's nice is there's some presets on these curves and you can give a couple of these presets a try like increase contrast, medium contrast, strong contrast and you can see what happens is I get 
just sort of a gentle S curve. And what's happening here is these are again remapping values, just in a different way. It's got a mid gray in the center here, the top right is white, and the bottom left is, is black. And <clears throat> what's happening is I'm remapping this value to this value, remapping mid gray right here to mid gray. Now if I wanted to remap mid gray to a lighter value, I can bring it up here. Now mid gray is this value. If I wanted to remap it all the way up to white, I can pull it up here. You can get some really wild stuff going on with the with these curves. For example, if you take a mid gray and map it up to white and then take your 75% um, gray, map it all the way to black and you know just go wonky with these things and make it cuckoo. You get some really interesting effects. Almost like a nuclear fallout, nuclear holocaust kind of image. So um, again the presets are useful too if you just want to do a basic increase of contrast and um, I'll turn on the layer visibility, um, I'll toggle the layer visibility on and off so you can see the uh, difference here. That's without and that's with. And that just is another way of kind of sweetening the image up. This can do everything that layer that uh, levels can do and but it does it just a little bit more with a little bit more finesse I think. But again a little harder to get your head around there's medium contrast and then strong contrast will take it a little further again there's without and there's with if I do a negative what's going to happen is it's going to flip the um, the adjustment curve from it's going to be normally it's bottom left to top right it's going to change from top right to bottom left when I make it a negative so all of the blacks are being remapped to white, mid grays stay at mid gray, and white gets remapped to black. And there's my negative image. That's my inverted image. That there's this is one of about five different ways that you have available in Photoshop to invert an image. Typical of Adobe, you've got twelve different ways to do the same thing. So <clears throat> And again, I can turn that visibility on and off. So easy to um, easy to see it without. And you can definitely stack these. You can make more than one. There's my take a look at my histogram one more time. And notice how it just flips left to right for an inversion. So just as you'd expect. Okay, I'm gonna delete that one. Whoops. I'm going to delete the whole layer, not just the... There we go. And I'm going to add uh, an exposure. The next one down. Now the exposure is kind of like a camera exposure. And I don't know about you, but I... You know, this seems like you could push the exposure up a little bit. And we get this ability now. Um, we, we did not have this ability back when when photographers were using film. Um, we get to cheat quite a lot with digital. Uh, if you're doing this type of thing, adjusting the exposure and um, <clears throat> making level adjustments and so on, ideally you'd have a camera raw file. Um, you might not have that in this particular case. If you don't have an expensive SLR camera, uh, you'll probably just get a JPEG out of your camera and that's fine. Um, you can still use all the same tools but um, in a perfect scenario you're doing this on a raw file. So exposure up or down that's basically all you need to do with this. You can use one of the defaults if you want but all they really do is just change the exposure up or down. That simple. <clears throat> Now, 
Let's see, what else is in here? Hue and saturation. We don't need to play with that. Um, posterize can be interesting if you want to posterize it. It reduces it to a certain number of levels. Normally, um, at least uh, a JPEG has 255 levels of uh, value. Uh, Camera Raw has many more. And if you wanted to reduce that to fewer levels, then it starts to become very stylized. So that posterize can be an interesting effect. I don't want to delete the layer mask, actually. I want to delete the whole layer. It's trying to delete what I have selected. It's got the layer mask selected right now. You can tell by the little square around it. And when I click delete, it's asking me if I want to delete the layer mask. Um, <clears throat> so, gradient map. OK, so uh, yeah, and you're, of course, welcome to um, experiment with any of these that you want to. But mainly, I just want to show the ones that you're going to be getting the most mileage out of on this assignment. Now, let me talk about that little white square next to the adjustment layer icon right here, the one that it's um, selected by default. It mentioned that it's called a layer mask. And what a mask does is it's very similar to a selection in a lot of ways. And basically, it either reveals or hides parts of the layer. Um, white. If it's a white pixel on the on the layer mask, it gets revealed, and if it's a black pixel, it gets hidden. And um, any level in between, let's say it's 50% gray, that pixel will be 50% hidden. If it's 25% gray, it's 25% hidden, and so on. So there's there's levels to the opacity, and um, you can select that layer mask, and you can just paint right on it. You make sure I've got my brush tool on, and I'm going to just use a, a round, soft brush. And I'm going to take my opacity down. And I'm not sure what size my, let's, okay, there we go. Here's my brush size. And I can paint some black. See over here? I've got just a little bit of black in the upper right corner. And I can use this to kind of mask off areas that I want to dim down the effect or turn it off completely. And I, and I can reveal areas. So I can mask and reveal areas selectively. Um, let me choose a setting that's a little more visible here. This is a little subtle. Let's do something that's n not so subtle. I'm going to turn on curves and I'm going to make this a negative. Okay, and <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide parts of this negative. And you can see if I hide parts of the negative, then the positive image is showing through. It's creating a very weird effect on this particular image. And that's just done by simply painting on the layer mask. And you could kind of play around with that and hide or reveal other parts of it as well. <clears throat> um, let's throw that out. I'm going to get rid of that. Oops, let's get rid of the whole thing. Did it again. And I'm back to my original image. Okay, now, what I want to do is I want to take a look at one more thing, is just how to render some lighting effects. It's under the filter menu, and I can come down to render lighting effects. And this has a way of um, sometimes bogging down the computer a little bit, depending on what kind of processor, power, memory, and so on that you have. Also, I think it uses your graphics card quite a bit. 
Um, if you're using the computers at LCC, I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, if you're using your computer at home, hard to say, but if it's a modern PC or Mac, it should be fine. Um, might be a little chunky on a four or five year old Mac, which is what I'm running. It's almost five years old now. So <clears throat> at any rate, what this does is basically creates a spotlight and you can use this in the same way that you would use a spotlight. I mean, it's just a flat effect because, of course, we're working with two-dimensional images, but it does provide quite a bit of um, light, you know, lighting technique to play with. And you can just kind of stretch it out and squash and stretch the the lighting effect to kind of. Um, kind of play with how it's working. That's pretty high intensity. Just like anything else, just experiment with it until you get a look that you are satisfied with. Um, a lot of times you can bring in a light from the corner and just kind of push that out. If you make it real big, you might have to bring up the intensity a tad. But, but it basically acts like a spotlight and you can in fact, you can even color the spotlight if you want to. And on a black and white image, what we end up is we just end up with a tinted image. Um, but on a color image, that can do some interesting stuff. And, oh, hey, where'd we go? There we are. Um, and these other settings are like a you know like anything else you can experiment with them and see how you feel about it. Um, I don't really find much need to play with this too much for this assignment, but if you get some mileage out of it, then more power to you. That's cool. Um, and there are some different uh, lights. There's a point light and an infinite light as well. Um, a spotlight is like a cone of light like coming out of a you know like a spotlight that you'd have on the stage of a of a play or theatrical production um, a point light is more like a light bulb where like a bare light bulb where the light source is just radiating out in all directions no questions asked and this could actually um, this is the type of thing that simulates sunlight really well and this is also the type of thing that you would see in film noir like a bare light bulb just kinda hanging out that's how people are lit in those old film noir films so that's point light and infinite light um, I'm gonna level with you I'm not entirely sure what it is but just another lighting effect. I think it's kind of an ambient light, like an all-over light. So if I crank it up, basically the whole image just gets brighter. And if I bring it down, the whole image gets darker. So most likely you're going to be using spotlight. But point light has some possibility to it as well. Let's bring up the intensity a little bit. Widen this out. Not quite that much. Lengthen it some. Okay, so that's a uh, that's a basic lighting effect that you can render. You can do more than one of these as well. So if I click OK, um, there's my little shaft of light coming out. And there are lots more possibilities for this project, ways to alter the lighting throughout your series. Um, you'll find some of the more advanced ones in the, let's see, I think it's in the Unit 12 on D2L under Web Resources, Unit 12 Project 2. Yeah, under the web resources, um, adjustment layer basics, levels and curves, lighting with blend modes, light in Photoshop, advanced dramatic lighting. So that kind of stuff um, it, the, is consider it all optional, but it's stuff you can play with if you if you feel inclined. So that's it. Thank you very much for listening and enjoy project two.